couch, dogs, me, guitar lessons. Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome fingerstyle blues lesson right here on Lickin' Riff, in which I want to share with you one of my favorite methods for trading solos with myself using fingerstyle. It's a fingerstyle blues riff that you can use to create that frame of mind where you're playing two guitars, even when you're alone. You can trade solos and hone your soloing skills because it creates a really strong, funky back and forth feel. And it actually relies on one simple riff, um, and then I'll show you different options around the neck, how you can actually do a question and answer kind of thing while using this riff. It kind of puts you in a frame of mind where you need to keep time and yet improvise and feel free to solo. So the basic riff goes something like this. Right? Again. Right? And this is the background riff. Right? This is our backing track riff. So basically we're playing solos on a backing track, but we're also playing the backing track. And that's the good thing about this exercise. It creates a duality feel, kind of a multiple personality feel. So the riff is E, A, E, okay? But we're not playing the A bass, we're just playing E. So play E, and you play the bass twice. Okay, you can palm mute it, okay? To create that funky feel. And then you play strings two, three, and four. And then the E bass again, then you bar the second fret for strings two, three, and four, okay, for A, okay. Then you play strings um, six and four, you're back on E, so it's an E octave, and then you hammer on zero to one on the third string with the open second string, so you get this, okay, and you can I'll mute both the fourth and the sixth string. So, okay, this is the riff. So practice that and get used to that. Okay, and then you can start soloing. Now, um, I'm gonna use the pentatonic scale, but I'm gonna use both major and minor pentatonics. And instead of just focusing on the scale, I'm gonna focus on positions around the neck. Now, the main idea is to play something like this. You can toy around with it as much as you like and every time you'll get something slightly different. Now the idea is to play uh, a kind of a question and answer direct dialogue between you and yourself among the backing track riff. Okay, it doesn't make any sense what I just said. Um, you create short intentional licks and every time you can focus on a different place on the neck thus um, just pretending that you're two guitar players and that you're soloing together with yourself, creating a sense of playing with someone else, which is pretty difficult to do when you're playing alone, but using this simple riff, you can really play around with that and actually feel like you're playing with someone else. This is the great thing about this exercise, and it's not just an exercise, you can actually perform with it if you do it really, really well. You can also do an A chord, of course, right? So A, I just bar the second fret, strings uh, two, three, and four. I play the A bass twice, then the chord, and then the bass again. Then I put uh, three and four on strings two and four, okay, for D. So, okay, and then the A bass again. Then I slide from one to two on strings two, three, and four, so, right? And you can do the, Okay, the, that, that, the, the two note thing be uh, before the, the last, the slide. You can play strengths five and four. Okay. Um, now, how do you solo over this? This is a very intentional 
solo thing. And it's kind of a funky blues. Now, I will discuss what we can do with the B7 later on. You can just arpeggiate it. Right? And they just create arpeggios instead of playing the B7 chord. But we'll get to that. So, what do I do here? First of all, I mix the major and minor pentatonics. But I'm not thinking about the the scale shapes per se. I choose just a small box of notes that I can play around with. For example, I started with this. Okay? Which is a mixture of the major and minor E pentatonics. Now the minor one is seven, five, eight, five, and seven on the first, second, and third strings. Seven, five, eight, five, seven. Now we're not gonna touch four because not gonna do that note because we're gonna replace the seven anyway with six. Now, okay, this is the it belongs to the belongs to the A major chord. Okay, this is the E Dorian scale. And okay, never mind what that means. If you don't know, it doesn't matter. It matters if you know how to use it. So that's what we're gonna learn now. Right okay, now. Um, we have the 7 on the 2nd string as well, so we have 7-5, seven, 8-7-5, five, seven, five, and 7 and 6 on the 3rd string. Now we're not going to use all of them all the time, even though it sounds good. Yeah, but it sounds a little bit jazzy. Yeah, a little bit yeah, bordering on jazz. It's not jazz per se, but it borders on jazz and we want to keep it bluesy, just the pentatonic feel. So, so you can do 7-5-8-5 seven, five, five, or 7-5-7-5 seven, five, seven, five, and create that minor and major feel. And you can play either 6 or 7 on the 3rd string. Okay. And whenever you bend 7 on the 2nd string, you get that 8. Okay? Okay? So experiment with that, it's short licks anyway. Okay, and try to end each lick on 5 on the 2nd string. Play around with that box. You don't have to play all around the neck all the time. Now, um, what I just did here, okay, I added six on the uh, the first string, okay, for the blue note. Okay, the blue note. Um, if you think you don't know it, you do know it. If you've ever played the blues pentatonic, um, the blues pentatonic shape. Okay, this this was it, the three on the the second string. Okay, so this is the octave. Okay, so okay, so try as many different options as you can. Now I'm soloing with a finger and the thumb. Okay, I'm gonna make a lesson on how to solo with your fingers, but this is so simple that you can actually use one finger. Okay, just the thumb or. Okay, just one finger or three fingers. Okay, like finger style. Okay, like you're picking a classical guitar. Everything works here. Okay, now I move to three and five. Okay, and you can... You can't use five, but... You have four on the third string, and you have three as well, because that's the blue note. Mm. Okay, you have fingers, you can jump around, play two different strings. Okay, um, three and four on strings one and uh, three. Just play around with different options. Yeah, 
just barred the third fret and just played different variations of these th uh, four notes. Okay, five and three, four and three. I have no idea what I've done. I just knew that I wanted to finish on five on the second string and it sounded good. Okay, see, you don't, you don't even have to know what you're doing. You just know what the target note is. And most of the time the target note is the same note. Now, of course, you have the first position pentatonic uh, shape, but because it's with the open strings, I don't like it that much. It sounds a little bit anemic. Okay, you have the same notes everywhere else, um, but you can. So you can do three, two, zero on both strings one and two, and on the third string because that's the blue note. So that's again the Dorian scale. So okay, this two on the second string, that's inside A major. So okay, it doesn't have to be complicated. Just keep it interesting rhythm wise. Okay, do um, a couple of eighth notes, stop for a moment. Okay, complete stop or let it ring. Okay. Um, play the open E string and then slide to five on the B string, create that uh, unison film. Okay, now you can use four on the E string if you like to uh, create an E major sound. Okay, and then either five on the B string or three on the B string for the E7 sound. So that's kind of advanced, okay, but know that you have this shape. Okay, four and three on strings one and two. So you can play around with that as well. Okay, and create a jazzy sort of sound. Okay, now you can do it on um, seven and six as well. If you want to create a diminished sound, but I'm shutting up about complex stuff now. I want to keep it simple. So, um, we've covered this part of the neck. Now let's look at seven to 12. Now you have the, the pentatonic box there um, between uh, shapes four and five. So you have 12 and 10 on strings one and two, and then eight on the second string, then nine on the third. So, okay. okay. Now, um, you also have seven on the E string. And let's just try to find ideas before we move on to the, to the mixture of major and minor, okay? So, um, Get used to that shape. Now, the major pentatonic for E is here. Okay, it's uh, on nine. So it's exactly the same shape as the first uh, position shape, but on nine instead of 12. So you have 12, nine, 12, nine, 11, nine, 11, nine, 11, nine, 12, nine. Now I suggest you don't use all of it. Now, 11 and 9 on strings 3 and 4 will give you the same result as, okay, as what we played here on 7 and 5. So what you can do is you can mix 12 and 9 and 11 and 9. Another advanced bonus, you can also use 13 on the third string and create um, 9, 12, and 13 to create a kind of a super uh, mixture. Right? Okay, so you can do it on, on 8 and 5 as well with 9 on the second string. 
And uh, you can try it with seven on the third or with six. Okay. Okay, can you hear the difference between six and seven? The same goes for 11 and 12 on the fourth string, but that's an advanced option. don't have to do it just giving you options but let's return to strings one and two now you have E okay on nine so you have nine nine and nine on strings two three and four you can play chromatics around all of that okay you can play you can end your lines on eight nine on each string on strings two three and four so okay and on nine on the second The third. Ah. Mm. Okay, start with the box and then eight to nine on the fourth. Creates a surprise. You see, this is why this exercise is so good because every time you come up with something different, okay, you can also play strings uh, two and three. Sorry, uh, um, two and four. Okay, nine and nine, just play around with it. Okay, chromatically. Okay, I know I added seven, but I did seven, eight, nine. Okay, chromatic. And you also have nine on the E string. Again, it's the, the A major note. Okay, so you can do that. You can, uh, you can use... Um, If you want to move to A. Yeah, this is kind of a sloppy line. I bet there's a better way to play this. I need to slide to 10 on the second string. But again, I'm doing overly complicated stuff. Okay, and this can take you to A. I think I'm uh, taking the guitar a little bit out of tune with all those bends and crazy stupid stuff. But... Right? And you can also do chromatics in between all of them. 8, 11, 10. Mm. Right? Uh, I took the 12, 10. Right? And added the 11. And then ended on 9 on the second string. See? A mixture between major and minor. You can just jump around between the between the different shapes, between the different boxes. Practice a couple of them at a time and you'll be flowing around the neck and playing mixtures without even noticing it. Okay, you have to think about everything when you just start out, but if you focus on one shape until you get it down under your fingers, then you'll see that it's it becomes really easy as you go along. You memorize one shape, you move on to the next one, then you start combining both of them. And then, after a week, two weeks, a month, um, you realize that you're just jamming around the neck using one shape, uh, one riff, sorry. Now, I promised you um, something with B7. Now, the normal B7 doesn't really cut it here, so you can either play around this B shape, right? And again, chromatic. And um, then just play around the, the major uh, shape with six on the third string because that's around A. So you're hinting at the chord. Okay, I'm hinting at four on the second string because it's in B. And then, right? And then just, you can end on five on the second string again if you don't want to get overly complicated. Or you can play six on the fourth string because that's 
the E major note that you're hammering on so you can okay, just make sure you end on this note or you can take this shape okay the E shaped bar on seven and on five so you can arpeggiate it okay so you have um, um, nine eight and seven on strings four three two okay and then you can just Use the, the same notes uh, as you used before. Uh, for example, you can use uh, 10, 9, and 7 on the second string, including the chromatics. And then you can go down. Okay, so. Right? And when you go down two frets, you can start the same lick you choose to do. And end on the six on the fourth string for E major. Do you realize what I'm doing here? I'm doing B, A, and E. But I'm just arpeggiating it. Right? Same thing. Ending on E. Just a little bit of jazziness here. But again, it's not jazzy, it's just arpeggiating the chords. It's done in, in classical as well. So Again, around B, again, you can do, you don't even have to do an arpeggio even. Okay, you can just play around the chord notes. Okay, so. And then you have A, two frets down, so. Okay, and then go back to your soloing, to your blues soloing. You don't really have to arpeggiate all three. Okay? That's what you can do with the B7 thing. Now, um, those of you who are sticklers saw that I was playing B major and not B7. So if you want B major, you have the seven on the D string. So it's a D7 shape on strings two, three, and four on seven, eight, seven. Okay, and this gives you even more options. Okay, the seventh note. And then go to A and you can do the same thing, the D7 shape on five on strings two and uh, three and four. Okay, so, and then find your way uh, into E again. So, um, see, don't have to repeat the lick. You just continue soloing back to E. Um, so uh, that's uh, that's my favorite way of uh, soloing with myself and pretending that I'm playing two different parts along with a backing track, all three of which are me. And this is the best method I know um, of kind of pretending that you're playing three different parts without driving yourself completely insane. Uh, so, um, before you go practice this, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I don't know what you're waiting for. There's a ton of free lessons over here. Everything is for free, but if you want to give something back anyway, there's a Patreon page, which you can find in the description. And any donation, any support, uh, any pledge goes right back into Lick and Ref into making your lessons, your free lessons. And it's my pleasure. So go ahead, have fun. Um, divide yourself into three different players and just lose your way into the night. I'll see you later. I'll go have a glass of water because apparently I'm losing my marbles. So bye for now. Thanks for watching. Enjoy.